So what causes these differences? Why are some people you know, higher than others, whether it's regardless of the specific areas? You know, why are there these individual differences in learnability? And, and you know, first of all, we know a lot from behavior genetic studies that compare identical and non-identical twins to what degree differences in openness to experience, which is the term that psychologists have used mostly to refer to learnability, um, are a function of environmental forces or genetic forces. And for most psychological traits, it's, it's around 50-50, okay, which doesn't mean that we're sitting on the fence, but actually that there are some genuine biological factors that cause early dispositions and some environmental forces that are uh, at play as well. What's interesting is that for openness, it's a little bit, the genetic influences are a little bit higher than for other personality traits. And, and the main reason for this is that openness is linked to a neurotransmitter called dopamine, which actually drives exploration. If you're high on openness, again, high on learnability, it means you get bored very quickly. And to address this kind of boredom and uh, this kind of a uh, um, uh, basically rapid propensity towards boredom, you need to explore the world and counterbalance that and do things, right? So all the activities and, this, and the pictures that I showed in my previous slide have in common that they arouse the mind. You know, they're feeding your hungry mind. So if you're very low in openness, you have no desire or no need to do that because you're already quite stimulated, okay? So because of this, we know that there are national and geographical differences in uh, openness or curiosity. Um, you can see here the United States is a little bit higher than average. What's perhaps more interesting is the kind of, um, the kind of not genetic, but epidemiological analysis that people have done of these differences. There's a great paper published a few years ago that found that basically there's a correlation between how curious people are and how cold the region is. The colder the region, on average, the more curious people are. And there's an evolutionary explanation for this, which is that in cold region, regions, the risk of parasitic infection is lower. Okay, so you can go out and explore sexually and socially and relate to people who are different from you, and there's less of a risk of getting infected and getting a disease. Okay, this of course snowballs because as places become more open-minded, more open-minded people move to those places, not just because the coffee is better and they can go to a vegan sandwich place, but also because people are more mind uh, alike, you know, from a kind of intellectual perspective. So this is very, very interesting and explains why, I mean, you can look at this geographically within the same country and different, of course, there's going to be exceptions, but there is a strong effect here. Uh, relating to these differences. Some of you will be familiar with the work of Hofstede, the guy who was at IBM and profiled the different kind of um, uh, values of uh, cultures and he kind of did a profile of um, national values and here's his taxonomy which is very famous. There's one scale in the Hofstede model uh, uncertainty avoidance that is strongly related to learnability. Some cultures and you can think of cultures at the level of Countries, organizations, maybe teams, and maybe ethnicity, nationality, whatever you want, but certainly there's always differences in how cultures tolerant, uh, tolerate ambiguity or ambivalence, okay? Think of people as well. Certain people, you know, they have a very high need for closure. Everything has to be black and white. Every, they, they are afraid of the gray zone and they have a very, very strong propensity to or high need for closure, which means that they push things either, you know, it's love or hate, nothing in between, okay? That's the opposite of a high learnability profile, which is being so comfortable with ambiguity and complexity that almost anything goes, you know, anything goes. I mean, it's quite counterproductive in some ways because you get excited about everything, you see the potential everywhere, etc., cetera, and, and, you know, maybe you become a nihilist or a kind of postmodern philosopher, right? If that is, a, it's a lot clearer, certainly, if you're looking at, leaders or uh, people in authority position or power, it's much more inspiring for people to have somebody who seems to know exactly what's right, what's wrong, because most people don't, okay? So that's interesting because you can compare, again, I use Argentina and Singapore as the opposite example. You can think even within Europe, compare Northern Europe, Mediterranean countries, uh, you can compare the, you know, different areas in the US, you can compare different continents and you'll find these differences.